Welcome, it's a great day to be a miner. It's a great day to be a miner because we got a brand new piece of hardware to test out. But first, let's go ahead and spin that intro. All right, we're back. So this is an RTX 4060 Ti. It's a Gigabyte Eagle Edition, and it is picked up from the Amazon warehouse. I've never before bought a GPU from the Amazon warehouse, and that's usually your returned or your used um, GPUs. And as you can see, this one didn't come with the actual sleeve box that the Gigabyte usually come with, just the interior box. Um, which is fine since it was probably cheaper that way. This one cost me $330, so pretty heck of a good deal for a 4060 Ti. And uh, I blame Mr. Crootman for going this route since he recently bought a whole bunch of them off of the warehouse this way. And uh, yeah, so now I've bought a couple and we're gonna test this thing out and we're gonna see how it works. We're gonna put it on the test bench. We're gonna stress test it. We're gonna make sure that it is legit and that it works. Cause if it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to send it back. And there's probably a pretty limited window whenever you buy something through the Amazon warehouse. So we definitely wanna get this thing set up. We wanna test it. We wanna make sure that it uh, displays properly and that it mines well, and of course. And uh, so, yeah. But before we do that, let's cut to our sponsor. You know quantum computers. You know blockchain. But do you know both together? Dynex was the first platform to create a neuromorphic supercomputing blockchain-based algorithm which solves real-world problems. And the best part? Anyone can post a job. Whether a company from the Global 2000, a machine learning job, or fintech and pharmaceutical. And if you don't want to program it yourself, get an expert directly at the marketplace. Run the job and be impressed by the fast result. So first, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. You know what time it is, RGB knife. Engage. All right, so let's open this thing up. And as you can see, the sleeve is gone that has the nice Gigabyte Eagle, pretty similar to the ones above me there from the 3060 series, 3060 Ti series. Um, so yeah, it's the Eagle 3 Fan Edition. And there's our box. It's the original Gigabyte box. We'll open it up. And let's pop this thing out. It does come in the anti-static bag. Just opened up root crudely and no other materials are in the box other than the foam itself so not too bad we'll set that aside pull it out of the anti-static bag all right so there it is it's really it's a nice looking gpu i mean these are the cheaper all plastic type shroud and back plate um, Passes the smell test, it doesn't smell burnt, and it also doesn't smell like cigarette smoke or something nasty like that. Uh, visually, it, uh, visually, it looks impeccable. There aren't any, any scratches on this thing. It, it, I was just about to say that there are none of the included caps, but one just randomly fell off of the side where it had slid up in there. So that's nice. Um, so one of the protective caps comes with it. The rest are not. That's an HDMI cap. This thing has two HDMI ports and two display port outs. It's the Gigabyte Eagle uh, OC RTX 4060 Ti. Um, it is quite a nice card. Let's do a nice close up look at this thing and then we'll proceed with our testing. All 
Okay, so there she is. She looks brand new. Um, it looks beautiful. It looks in great condition. I'm just hoping that it will perform as well as it looks. Most of the time people are sending these back because they're wanting a bigger, better, stronger GPU. Maybe they decided that the 4060 Ti didn't have enough power. Um, this one is kind of neat. It does have the BIOS flip switch for the OC mode or the silent, which of course doesn't too much mind matter for mining, but it's great for um, you know, your gaming and your everyday usage for a PC. And this is a great mid to low, uh, low end GPU for modern day specs for running modern day titles. This thing's pretty powerful um, for the price. So, and we're back and yeah, we've got it plugged into the test bench. We're all set up here. And now the only thing to do is to power this thing on and make sure that we get a boot and then we get an image. I'm starting with the image, let's actually plug into the GPU and go from there to begin with and make sure that we get a display out. And then once we confirm that the GPU is giving the display out, when uh, then we'll run the test on the GPU specifically and then we'll stress test it and we'll check the memory and make sure that everything is functioning as it should. And then if everything, all the boxes are checked and all the I's are crossed and the T's are dotted, then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get this thing mining and make sure that it runs nice and stable and is nice and efficient and make sure that the fans all spin and that there's no heating issues. So now we're booting and we're waiting for it to post. We're waiting for an image to display here and uh, see what we got. One, two, all three fans are spinning. The old hand test. Okay, so first things first, we went ahead and booted this guy up. This test bench is set up for dual boot. It, that, how I did it is I have a SSD um, on the back side, a 2.5 inch solid state drive, and it is set up with AMD drivers. And then on internal, I have an NVMe drive and it is set up with NVIDIA drivers. And then if I want to switch back and forth, I can just change the boot order or I could simply unplug the data the SATA cable into the 2.5 inch whichever is more convenient at the time and then that way I can either separate between AMD and Nvidia quickly without having to update everything but the Nvidia drivers on here did need updated so I booted in and I'm using the internal graphics so let's talk about what the test bench consists of this test bench is 32 gigabytes of the Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB because we know that adds hash rate, right? So then it has a 10600K CPU Intel, a solid mid-grade performer that used to be pretty high in its class, give or take. And then of course it's running off of a motherboard. It's the Asus Prime H570 motherboard. Um, yeah, so that's our setup. And then of course we've got the solid state drive, which is just a cheap silicon power. Those things are tanks, they just work. And then a 2.5 inch drive. And then we have a EVGA 650 watt gold PSU, and then an EVGA 240 millimeter AIO in case I wanna push the CPU on this guy. So yeah, we booted it up. First things first, we make sure our remote connection is set up because I had to update the drivers and Windows, of course, needed updated. And then the number one thing you need to update when you put in a new graphics card is you want to put in clean NVIDIA drivers or Radeon drivers for an AMD card. So went ahead and installed new NVIDIA drivers right here. It just finished the installation. Um, so yeah, so then our graphics card should now show in Windows. Let's make sure, and we'll go to our device manager, device manager, and our display adapter, boom. So it shows up right away uh, in device manager. There's no errors. Let's click into it. Device is working properly. So that's a good start for us right out the gate. It is functioning according to that. Um, let's open Afterburner and make sure that it's showing in there properly. MSI Afterburner, and yep, uh, yep, sure is. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti, and it shows our drivers, the new drivers we put in are 546.33. So yeah, the GPU is at least visually working. I haven't plugged it in because I'm running the display out of the motherboard. So we'll switch the display to the GPU, then we're gonna do a mem test on the GPU, and then we're gonna go ahead and do a benchmark and a stress test to make sure this guy is working. I think for that, we'll do it under the remote session. 
And then uh, final steps, of course, are let's test it on mining and make sure that it stays stable and it can handle some hash rate without any major errors. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right, so here we are. We're over into our remote session. And then there again is our device manager. We can see that our GPU is showing. We can see that MSI Afterburner shows it and our drivers that are installed. The first thing that I like to do is a GPU amendment test. So we're gonna fire this up. Oh, well, to do that first, we have to actually make the GPU as the display out. So we're going to switch it first, and then we're going to do the GPU mem test. It's trying to do the integrated graphics. Let's go switch to that. Okay, so I switched the display out and running a display port to the monitor, to the GPU, instead of the onboard graphics off the motherboard, and then relaunched GPU mem test, and there it is. There is our GPU, and then we're going to do a run test, and then it says that we might have some issues and blah, blah, blah. Let's proceed. And then we're gonna let this thing run and make sure that everything passes and then we'll come back. All right, we're back and as expected, all tests were okay for the GPU mem test for our 4060 Ti. So next we're going to run a test on the GPU to see, we're gonna do a test bench, uh, benchmark rather, first. And then after that, we are going to um, actually stress test it. But you know what? I think what we're gonna do is download the newest version of this first, and then we're gonna test it. So let's go ahead and download, install, update, and then we'll test, go. All right, so we went ahead and updated the MSI Combuster. It's now 4.1.27. And the first thing we're gonna do is we, are, we make sure the GPU is showing there and it shows the temp and the load is 0% because nothing's running on it. And then we're just gonna do a benchmark on 1080p and then we'll run a stress test to see where we land. So let's go ahead and click this thing and let it go. Time lapse. All right, so there we go. It's not 100% accurate because of course I'm doing a screen share and then that's probably taking some of it up. And um, But yeah, it's not bad. For 4591, 76 uh, FPS, decent. Um, and that's kind of what I would expect right here. And uh, so yeah, we did pretty good on the this basic test. And then we're gonna do a stress test. And then of course we'll do our mining test. Let's go ahead and do the stress test and get it running. It shows right there too. We're up to 66C, which is pretty warm, but not incredibly hot. Um, and we are now currently running 90 FPS down at the bottom. GPU usage running at 98, 99%. Um, yeah, we should go get the actual wattage that it's using too, since it's plugged into the uh, drock meter on the wall. So let's go get a, a wattage. All right, so we were running 233 watts at the wall and the GPU itself was running about 198 watts. System is only a 35 watt. Now that's not completely accurate either. I would have to actually use a uh, separate module to hook to the GPU to get the most accurate, but that's kind of accurate. So we're just trying to get a ballpark and make sure this thing is working perfectly and then we will get it mining. So the next part, we'll go ahead and run our stress test here. And then we're just going to let it go for a little while. And then we're going to make sure that we don't get any errors or any artifacts or anything like that. And make sure that our temperatures don't spike too crazy. Um, of course, MSI Afterburner will help our uh, temperatures if we were just going to keep it running on gaming. But we're just going to let the software itself dictate the temperatures and see how the fans ramp up and make sure they ramp up properly. So let's let this just run for a little while and then we'll come back. So yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and call it right there. It has been running for a little while. It's uh, staying around 74, 73 to 74 uh, C, which is pretty toasty, running about 75 to 76 FPS and staying about 235 watts at the wall. Um, so everything seems to be working really well with this one. Next, we'll test it on some mining and then we'll cut out for our conclusion. So yeah, let's go. All right, let's just fire up some of these stock algorithms. We'll go with the ETC and we're gonna see what it does here. This is just a copy of G Miner and just running off of their default 
ETC with no overclock parameters and whatever their default wallet and server is off of two miners. So it is spooling up. DAG verification passed. And as a note, I did select my user defined um, fan speed. Which I should have a custom curve. Yep, right there is my custom curve. Which saying that below 30, it's off. And then once it gets to 32, it starts at 50%. And then it ramps depending on the temperature. All right, stock seems to be running. It's running 98 watts, 33 mega hash. Let's turn up our memory and let's put it at like a thousand. And let's turn down our power. Let's see what that does for us. Well, there you have it. I picked this guy up for $320. I misspoke earlier. It was $319.99 from Amazon Warehouse. It was listed as in good condition, and I'm assuming that has to do with it missing the manual and the main part of the box, and it was just the shell of the box. Um, again, this is my first ever time purchasing from Amazon Warehouse. I want to thank Croot Man. He is the one who uh, kind of turned me on to this, so I gave it a whirl, and yeah, for $320 plus an additional $20 tax for pretty much a brand new GPU, um, 4060 Ti OC edition that works perfectly from everything I can tell, no issues. I feel like that's a steal. And I feel like if the bull run starts to come around and you've already stacked up 4060 Ti's or 4070's or some of the newer Radeon generation, then you, you may be sitting on a gold mine just in hardware itself we saw what happened to the last bull run if the bull, next bull run comes around and you're sitting on a stack of newer generation gpus you have money in the bank again i want to say thank you to Crute man make sure to go check out his channel i'll put a link down in the description below and so yeah if you're new to mining and you need some help make sure to join the misfit mining discord there's always plenty of seasoned vets in there willing to help you out if you like the video you know what to do smash that like button and subscribe for future content Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride.